Wa Guan Yi Kayona, you don't know it's Cambridge Every Universal, Osiris King Soy Commercial Don Universal. And welcome to the second episode of Cambridge Music Biz Tips. Glad to have you all here. I um, mean, early morning, so I have to drink my tea and things, so let's get this done. So today we're going to be talking about our ways how artists can make money in the 2024. Is in number one panelist is licensing your music. So what is that about? License involves granting permission to use your music in various media such as TV shows, movies, commercials, video games, and more. Is it me? And why? When you license your music, you can earn money through upfront fees and royalties each time your music is used. So the up to upfront fee, it varies for um different platforms. Like if it's a YouTube content creator or if it's a person who um was a music supervisor for a TV show. The fees um vary. So you get an upfront fee for like a YouTube, get anywhere from like thirty, fifty to hundred fifty dollars. Now for like a TV show, now if you want to use your if somebody want to use your music in a TV show, that go from like one thousand five hundred, so fifteen hundred to like three thousand to six thousand dollars. Cause they have a big out budget and they could pay more to license a song. And usually they want to keep it as a exclusive track. And then sometimes they might go for the non exclusive where other companies keep licensing the same song from you. And uh, the fee probably will go a little bit down. So the fee will go down maybe like to $2,000. And then you get royalties on the other side, where like every three months plus 30 days or, or 20 days, they pay out. And then that you get paid from your pros. So if you sign up with ASCAP, BMI, SESCA, or JCAP in Jamaica, Shabam in, in Belgium, I can't remember the next company in our performance rights organization in England or the UK, but yeah, I can check as well too. But your yeah, performance rights organization will pay out those royalties if you get a um, license in there. That's the main reason why you get a, um, you sign with a pro. Uh, so the second one is getting royalties from your streaming services. That means artists can earn money from their music being paid on streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Music, iHeartRadio, so many different platforms. They stream music. People can hear it. And you can make money from them. The streaming services, services pay artists royalties based on the number of plays that their songs receive. While this peer stream rate is typically low, a large number of streams can add up to a substantial income. So basically, the streaming money is pennies on a dollar, sometimes dollars. But if you get a lot of streams or your music go viral, that can quickly add up and you can make a lot of money. So as an upcoming artist, if you work consistently and promote are good enough, you can see anywhere from $1 to $10 to $20 to $30, $40, $50 every month from your music. You want to reach to those points. When you're first starting off and nobody really knows you don't have your fan base up, you might make 50 cents, maybe a dollar. Some people might make less than that, one cent. But don't be discouraged. Just keep promoting your music and it will build up over time. So it's like a, a ladder you're building or a staircase or like how the pyramids. So level by level. So, you know, levels to everything. So just keep at it. If you love music and that's what you want to do, you want to make money from it. Be happy making something for your music. Some people now make nothing. They walk up and down, they try to perform here and there, and they don't get paid from their, their music or their performances. So this is a way that you, you know you're making some money from your music. And you just have to increase it with time. So once you make your first $10, you say, all right, boom, I did this and I promote and now I made my $10 in music. Then you want to go to making $20, $50, even $100 to $1,000 in your music and more. So always pay attention every month. See your streaming data. If you have Distro, Distro Kid, United Masters, TuneCore, you can see your stats every month. You'll see how much plays you got on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, and other streaming services. And you can see how much money you made. And you can see where, where your fans came from, where your fans were listening to your music. And then you can focus on that next month. So, okay, boom, I got this amount of money. And this is my, and it's come from these people listening to my music in California or Jamaica or da. And it's okay. So I'm going to promote more into that area. 
So that next month, you can increase your on the revenue from your streams because you identify fans or where people are listening to your music in certain areas or certain places. And then you just push more content, focus on those people so that you can consume more of your music. All right. So the third one now, third way is selling merchandise. Merchandise sales include items like T-shirts, posters, vinyl records, and other branded goods. And you want those because selling merch allows artists to monetize their brand and provide fans with tangible items that they can hold and feel. And I mean, they can out in their hand and say, wow, I got this from Kate Marshall. Wow, this is this cool. So yeah, know me, I'm, I'm a big fan or I'm very focused on merchandising. So all the products I come out with, you know, I make merchandise for those EPs. Or the singles are released for other artists and clouds work for other artists because it gives fans the opportunity to, uh, okay, own something or have something connected to this music product that we put out. That me and other artists, we work so very hard to work on this music. You know what I mean? And put out good quality music and just enjoy music and have fun making music. So with the business now, too, of course, we want to get paid for our music. So putting out there to collect money. It helps us so we can invest back into the music and then, yeah, buy some more equipment, buy a better uh, microphone, buy better headphones to buy software to make the music sound much cleaner and crisp. So all this costs money and is that, that becomes a trade, a trade off. So with the money that fans give us for our merchandise, it allows us to invest back into ourselves and become better artists, better producers. While the fans now, they get something like a, a bag, sneakers, sweater, pullover, braces, necklaces, posters. You know what I mean? So they get this and it's, it's value because they say, wow, I got this poster, I got this bag, and you know, it's, it's a commercial bag or the Guan Chap bag. You know what I mean? So they feel part of the music process with us. And they, of course they are. They listen to our music. They're on our social media. They follow us. They um, comment on our posts. So it's good that they own something connected to us and the music. All right? So four, this is touring and live events. Performing live shows and going on tour can be a major income source for artists. This is facts. So like if you want to go to Nicaragua, Costa Rica, I mean, I have a lot of links over there as well. Or even Jamaica. You know somebody put on um, an event. Or so, like in Jamaica, dance all Thursdays and stuff like that. So you want to contact, contact some people, have your manager contact them. Or if you if you have a manager, you contact them yourself and ask them, yeah, I'm be in Jamaica for some time, for a week or two. They want to know what, what events will be held during those two weeks. And then see if you get bookings to go at those events and perform and collect some money. Give them a, 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 your booking fee. Your booking fee might vary from Jamaica, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, because there's a taking factor the economies of each country or territory that you or jurisdiction that you go. So the price you give in Jamaica, it'll be a different price you give them in Nicaragua and different price you give in the United States. I mean, so just do some research into the, the economy in any place you want to do a tour. And you do research beforehand. Before you go there, you want to plan at least a month in advance, maybe two or three months in advance, so you get the right connects and the right links and stuff and get things done, especially if it's in Nicaragua. Nicaragua, online is not too, mm -mm, they don't do too much business online. They better go to Nicaragua and do stuff in person. You know what I mean? They get more things done. Nicaragua, you want to go inside there, you want to have a, a person. And if you go on blue fields, you want to have somebody. When the music industry works and lives in Bluefields or on the Caribbean side, could be Puerto Cabeza, could be Corn Island, Big Corn Island, Liquid Corn Island, and stuff like that. Now, I'm big up EMB, same way. You know, I'm Dread Vibes, people like that. Now, I mean, AK Nika Flow. Now, I mean, so you just want to have a link. You know, Pacific Coast, you need somebody like Pachuco. Now, I mean, Luis. He got the links for the radio stations on the Pacific Coast, like Chinandega. Now, I mean, Link to Managua. And let know, say, I'm being in Nicaragua for this amount of time. What shows or events are going on? Which bars do you want to do a promotion? Where you can um, do a tour in a couple bars in the area. You know what I mean? And then 
they put you on a flyer and they charge a cover fee. You get some money from the door. The bar gets some money from the door or the bar just get money from the liquor sales. You know what I mean? And if you're not states, you might need, uh, you well, you definitely need a liquor license, but Jamaica, Nicaragua, things are a little different still, so you could just, everything varies. Do your research. You know what I mean? Because live, live events generate revenue through ticket sales, merchandising sales at the venue and potential sponsorships. So again, we're merchandising, merchandising, you can sell merchandise at the venue. So at the bar or the event space, you can sell your merch. You can collect, that'll be your money to collect. The bars will collect from the door and they'll collect from the liquor sales. So that'll be extra. You won't collect from the door as well, but to, uh, to earn extra money where you can invest back in yourself, you can sell the merch in the venue. And then, um, p- potential sponsorships, right? So you do an event and you have a good following and you're kind of big on social media and you know, you can draw your crowd to come to see you at this place. I mean, the photo and see you at this place and stuff at this venue. Then what you can do is let the brands know, bigger companies or if you have some friends who do business stuff for that and they're up there, let them know, say, are you doing this event? You're going to be in Nicaragua, you're going to be over here and stuff for that. You know what I mean? And you want to say they want to sponsor your event, put some money into invest into your, your event. And then they get to put up their promotional um flyers and their business flyers and stuff like that inside of the, the event. So when people come see you perform, they see all one child is sponsoring this event. They see a next company sponsoring the event. I mean, and then it'll get them more sales for their business as well too, and bring them more clients to their their business. So boss, that's so. I mean, so tour ourselves build stronger fan base and increase exposure. So when you travel now and people see you in person, they see you perform live and direct. Is a is an experience. It's different from they just hearing your music on social media on TikTok and thing and. And they actually um hear you rapping on online. But when they see you in person, they see how tall you are, or how short you are, or you, you hear your style and stuff in person. Now I mean, they see your voice, your natural voice as well too. And as you just be able to okay, shake your hand and stuff, or give you a pound, a dap and stuff. I mean, uh, some people will smoke and so you might smoke with some of your fans like that. Like that's the experience that like, they would never got if they didn't, never got to see you in person. So all this. Are very beneficial to helping earn more money from your music if you want to turn to live events. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. So number five, brand partnerships. Collaborate with brands for endorsements, sponsorships, and promotional campaigns. So like we were talking about a little bit earlier, that you know somebody who do big business or even some companies. If you do like a, a song when they're talking about a certain type of beer, a certain type of product that you use and it's an everyday product, I mean, a lot of artists, they talk about the brands of clothes that they wear, expensive brands. Maybe if you think about them, you can actually ask them or look or tell them that, oh, I have the opportunity. I'm, I'm an artist, or I'm a producer, and I use your, your clothing a lot. I like your clothing and it, it fits my image. So I want a brand partnership with you so you can sponsor my career, my music, or even just my event or part I'm having. And yeah, I'm gonna talk more about your clothing line, yeah, your brand, and that brings more business to them. It can be um liquor too. Some people love liquor, so if you want to buy at the bar, if you have a certain brand of cognac or a type of liquor that you love, you can ask the liquor company, okay, you want to sponsor me? So these are the brand partnerships that we're talking about. Because brands often seek artists to promote their products, and these partnerships can be very lucrative as well too. The bigger companies that have bigger budgets, they'll pay more money, a lot, lot more money. But you have to know how to approach them properly. So look into that as well too. I ask can earn money to paid endorsements, social media campaigns, and sponsored events. All right, all right. So number six on the list, selling beads. So producers, you know, this is my my expertise right now. So producers and beat makers. They can sell the instrumental tracks to other artists or content creators. Now I'm gonna go back into licensing, but when you when people purchase and you read them, it's usually it's usually a lease, right? So they get to use it for a certain amount of time. Now if it's exclusive, they're gonna have it for only them for a long period of time, maybe 10 years, 20 years, before the exclusive rights disappear. And then you can um 
we enter that, that instrument into the marketplace or they're into the marketplace so other people can use it. So platforms like BeatStars, which I use, Airbit, awesome, is good too. A lot of producers sell beats directly to buyers and artists. This can be a recurring source of income and helps build the industry connections. Yeah, because when you can, you can lease one rhythm, if it's not exclusive to many other artists, so they can jump, they are to jump on the rhythm and we'll see with time, whichever artists have a song on one of your rhythms that can go viral and that makes some big money. And then they could come back to you and then they can buy the full exclusive license, right? Or unlimited license. But generally, if the artist is not up there yet and they don't have the millions of fans and stuff, fan base, yeah, so a basic license probably the best option for them. And then that's so they can make their song, put it out there, distribute it to all these different music streaming platforms, make artists hear it, see if they like it, they messing with your tune and so if they want to support it. Know what I mean? Then before they invest more money into um trying to own the uh, rhythm for themselves or the beat for themselves. But with many artists now purchase a 20 rhythm or cool rhythm that you got, you can make that money. A lot of times. So if I were rating for um fifty dollars and many artists buy it or lease it, that's fifty times how much artists lease the rhythm. So y'all can do the maths by yourself on that. I mean, so that can make a lot of income for um producers as well. But if you're up a new producer, upcoming producer and nobody really know you, you're not gonna be getting a lot of sales on your rhythms yet. So you wanna make a fifty dollars here, a hundred dollars here, hundred fifty, two hundred, three hundred dollars. And then sometimes in my next month, it might go slow down for you and stuff like that, but it's okay. It's a journey, man. It's a journey. So enjoy the journey and the process. Just want to know that everything you set up is set up in the right way so that when people and clients do come, artists come or forward, you collect money. All right. Also on related to that topic, why you do stuff um, like this of leasing your beats and your rhythms? You're going to meet other producers. You're going to meet other artists as well, too. So, and other people in the industry. You got a lot of labels who want beat stars and Airbit to look for beats for their artists as well, too. So, when you're selling your beats and stuff, you might put like, oh, Drake type beat, Bob Marley type beat, Bob's Cartel type rhythm. You know what I mean? Because when people are looking for these, 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 these hot beats or these, these, these tracks, there's so much people selling beats or licensing beats online. So, Sometimes the labels and the artists themselves will look for a new beat to work on a project. They're searching for their, their artist name type beat. So that would be a good tip to help um, some artists as well too. But if you don't have your own brand, like K Mercial, and is big enough, and a lot, um, a lot of people in Jamaica, New York, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and United Kingdom, they know about K Mercial brand. Yeah, you can do your own brand in that way to this on your K-Mercial hashtag or your artist hashtag and people can find them. You know you have your, your artists already in your fan base and then you can promote from that. So you don't really have to do too much to the type beats. You can put out your own individual um, individual rhythms with your, your unique names. Promote like that. All right. So number seven on the list. All right. This one is called crowdfunding. What is crowdfunding? Raising money from fans and supporters to fund projects like albums, tours, or music videos. So this is when you reach out to your artists. I mean, as an artist, this is when you reach out to your fans or your fan base or even social media and say, okay, I have this upcoming project. You know I mean, I don't have all the funds to do it. You know, I'm an upcoming artist or even if you're a established artist, but the stuff you want to do is so big and so epic that you need a, a bigger budget and you probably don't have all the money to fund it. You can't afford it. Or maybe a label, they put some rules and stuff and then you, you can't touch that money because you didn't meet the other expectations. So you can't take no more of their money because they're going to go over their budget. So this is when you reach out to your supporters and your fans and say, okay, I have a music video coming up. I have a tour in Nicaragua coming up. But I might need a, they say I need a visa. If I'm in Jamaica and they say I need a visa. If I want to connect a flight to the United States, and then go to, to Nicaragua. That would be the fastest and, or that would be the cheapest way. But you can't get a U.S. visa. So you want to, you want to set a goal. The visa costs this amount of money and I need a pie for it. So if the fans can help out and donate to me so I can, um, get this visa so I can fly and do this tour in the United States or I'll go from, connect from the United States to Nicaragua or to our next country. Or 
if a Jamaican wants to go to Costa Rica, they need a Costa Rican visa. So when they find us, okay, the uh, Costa, Rica, Costa Rica visa embassy is in, in Kingston, Jamaica on Hope Road. And then they call them and they find out, okay, Costa Rican visa is $130 US in Jamaica. Then they might want to talk about some funds to get that because maybe they spent too much money on a large project and they don't really have it like that because the economy. So they can reach out to the fans and say they can help out. And fans who really support this artist and all these artists going places, yeah, they will support. Even if you don't get all, all the funds you need, you get some of the funds and then you can hustle and then add some extra funds on it. And then, yeah, you put out, you, you, you get your visa. It was like a travel expenses. You need going to go um, to the next country and the promoter is paying a certain amount of money to you, but it might not cover some extra things you need to get covered. Like if you have like a small entourage or you have a, a crew, like if you hire somebody to, to be a videographer, and just to make, make sure they video the whole experience of you traveling to the next country and stuff like that. And it was in the budget. And, but you need that because you know that's going to be content for you. And then I'll be content for days. So you want to hire somebody. And then, yeah, you can put that, you make a crowdfunding or crowd, establish a crowdfunding and ask your fan base, you need help raising funds to pay for the videographer, to pay for this other person to do the service that's going to make better content for you and for your fans because the fans are going to consume your content. So that's why you want to make sure you have somebody around you to capture every, every moment so you can post on so, social media and that they tap into what you're doing. All right, so websites, websites like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and Patreon enable artists to see financial support from their fan base. In return, fans re often receive exclusive content or experiences. Back to what I was saying a while ago, right? When um, fans help out and they help fund your projects, you want to get them exclusive things. You might get them some free merch. You know what I mean? You had merch, extra merch lying around or you have merch dropping in the future. And you know, so, okay, you didn't need the funds for right now because we need to get this thing going. We need to get moving right now. So they, the fans help you to fund your project. Now your project is complete. And now you have money coming back in because the project is complete. Now you say, boom. So some of this merch I have, I'm going to ship it to this, this fan. I'm going to ship it to that fan because when I needed the extra money, they are funding my project. So I'm going to give them back exclusive merch or even exclusive content. So beyond the scenes, you're in Nicaragua, your family and stuff like that. And you got some exclusive videos and stuff that you use in the restaurant and stuff like that. And yeah, a little more into your personal life and not the artist's life. Yeah, people who help fund your projects, you can only allow, you can allow for them to see those type of beyond the scenes content. I mean, and they, 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 they get an experience now that's more close to them and more close to you. So they can, you know what I mean, feel a different vibe or the different energy of your everyday life, which is cool. It was a good experience. All right. So now, Let's move on to number eight. This is close to, it's called crowdsourcing. What is crowdsourcing and how it differs from crowdfunding? Well, crowdsourcing is by engaging fans to contribute ideas, content, or resources for music projects. I want to repeat that again. So this one engages fans to contribute ideas, content, or resources for music projects. So suppose you have a next project coming out, or, or a tune, or a rhythm, and you tell your artists or, you know, you tell your fans, yo, there's no project, there's no beat, there's no this, there's no EP is dropping soon. Here's, here's, here's a demo of it. Go crazy. I mean, what ideas? How should I go about releasing this? When shall I release it? I don't know. Help me pick out the artwork for this. So we still work on the design. Like, uh, like well, I have a friend who does reggae and dancing music in New York. I mean, for some people, they say he's an upcoming artist. But for me, I know him for a long time. And I know his mom, she used to work at um, Town & Country on uh, Linden and say Albans. It was a, a I told Jamaican restaurant, man. It closed down our system to, I think, a buff buffet now. But yeah, Town & Country, man. In time, it's a real roster among them. Our Jamaicans that want to eat Ita food or want to step into Rastafari and eat healthy, right? Town & Country, man. Know what I mean? So the artist I'm talking about is I Nesta or Nesta. 
Now, I mean, his mom used to work over there and I used to go get my food with me and I talk all the time and stuff and he'd be there as well sometimes helping out too. Now I mean? But he always do music. So mama said, yo, you know, my son do music to him. So I got my, she know my father and my father was a music producer and so yeah, I'm a music producer too and my brother and stuff like that. So she introduced me to her son, Ernesto, Ernesto. Now I mean? So I know me for many years, he been producing about two, songwriting, Rapping, he could rap, DJ, all that, man. The man very talented, bro. You know what I mean? And so he did a, a crowd sourcing project recently with a song called Outside. You know what I mean? He sampled um Gypsum song. And he said, Oh, I need this, I need to get, I need to get I need to get the song clear. I need to get the sample clear because if it don't clear, I can't put out the song. The song is a banger. The song is like, gonna take over the summer. We outside for the summer. So he crowdsourced that project now. So it can get the right attention to get the sample cleared and then have the song ready to get released, but right before summer start. So, and you know how summer is in New York, man. New York, summertime, and then now more thing, you know? So the man did, you know, the man execute this very perfectly, bro. No respect to Nessa, man. Yo, the man did this perfect. You know what I mean? So TikTok, Instagram asks people, say, yo, and they say, you hear the song. So we can tune. I need to get the sound. I need to get the sample cleared. Tag Gypsum. Let Gypsum know. Let's get this. Let's get this cleared, man. You now within what maybe two weeks within a, to a month. Yeah, man, that get cleared. In, you know what I mean, and our song outside is outside. You see me? So that's what um crowdsourcing can do for you. To get your fans and your people on social media to get into to get involved with your project and help you um achieve a goal for your project. You know what I mean, like. Okay, an example. Yep. Crowdsourcing can involve fans in the creative process, such as designing album covers, remixing tracks, or creating promotional content. This fosters a deeper connection with fans and can reduce production costs. Now, I mean, because if he would have tried to clear something by himself and talk to this industry exec, this business manager and stuff, I'd be a money the money off the piano. To look around and search for the right person and stuff, and I mean, they got to pay for the samples or two. But crowdsourcing now, the project, the fans already say, yo, this is the hit song, you know. They got them all wind up on TikTok to the tune and this and that Instagram and stuff. So that when Gypsum team see that now, they say, oh, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. Nah, man, this song have to go outside, you know. Have to go outside. Know what I mean? So once they say, okay. They probably didn't have to charge him too much now. They probably didn't even charge him. I don't know yet. I'll probably ask him about that. Or one day I'll probably have him on the podcast soon to actually talk about that. But in those type of um, cases, sometimes the, the, the um, copyright owner for the tune, it could be the label or it could be the artist, just say, oh, the song sounds good and people like it already. So I'm not going to charge you for the sample. I'm going to just clear it for you. And then I'll take a percentage of uh, the royalties every month from the, um, the tune, which is a good deal. So. Crowdsourcing, don't sleep on that. It's a very good deal, you know? Very good thing for you. And number nine, networking. We tell you all the time, you have to network. Now, I mean, I know some people, I mean, a couple of paranoid and they just want to say to themselves and like that. You know what I mean? Antisocial. Yeah, I'm definitely like that too. I don't really party too much and stuff unless I'm getting booked to go to a party or to an event. You now, I mean, I work for Club and Resora, I work many other places. Now, I mean, in high school days, I used to go party up and down. I used to rent my father's um, sound system and play at uh, my friend's birthday parties or events or even backyard party for the summer in New York City. Yeah. And my friend having a party, so we need a DJ, we need a, we need speakers and stuff like that. They linked me. And I said, oh, tell my pops, yo, my friend have a party, da da da, da da. Could be on the South Side, North Side, Queens, could be in Brooklyn, Bronx, Long Island. Get them a price, so boom. So, all right, this all right. We could work with that. Now, I mean, and my friend them, of course, they get a liquor license, they charge in liquor and stuff. So, I security, pay security as well, too, and stuff. I mean, uh, we just, I mean, that's, that's how we move the funds, man. So, my father get paid, I get paid, you know what I mean? Trade off, they get to use the professional DJ equipment and high quality sound system. And my father actually come to the event. Help set up the whole sound system, make sure that the level sound right and stuff like that. And then my father dip. Then me and my brother cover on babies to just control the thing and stuff. Like that, I mean, and that's how we did, man. And sometimes we just 
When we don't feel party, we pack up now, put everything in the van and so. Then we go hop out to our next party and thing. Now, <laughs> you know I mean, them days, you know what I mean? People have to sit down in between the arm, um, the speaker box, them, you know what I mean? Put the van with some girls and stuff, you know what I mean? I go to different party, 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 party. Yeah, man, those are the days, man. But yeah, networking, let me get off topic, you know, networking, building relationships with the, within the music industry to create opportunities for collaborations and growth, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, when people know you for something and when they need that something, they're going to check you. That's what I mean. That's very important for networking. So always be about you and what you do and how you can help other people as well, too. You know what I mean? So yes, and then you're anti-social stuff, but you got you to gotta talk with people let them, and, and do what you do best and, and let, oh, make, make sure everybody knows what you do best. Because trust me, when they need something that you do, or you can provide, and they know that you live that, you, you live by what you say and what you do, they're going to check you. You know what I mean? Artists, work with other artists as well, too. You now I mean? Collab. Your upcoming artists, you want to get more streams, um, so you can make more revenue on your music, on your royalties. Collab with other artists. Collab with other producers. Get a different sound. You know what I mean? You get that by working with other people, bouncing off with their creative energy and ideas as well, too. And then you come up with a big song, you know what I mean? That you can, of course, you can make a big song by yourself, but when you work with other people, it's, let's say, more than one mind, right? So enough minds working on one thing, yeah, you might get a better outcome. So networking. So I work with other people. Shout out to other countries. When you go to other countries, you go on tour, then you go with the artists in those countries. Now, when I go to Nicaragua, I'm always looking for new artists to work with as well, too. Always. Now, I mean, I find some artists and I let's know, boom, if I can't link up with you in person right now, I'm going to make it out so big. It's like three, four hours. Just to travel from one place to the next place and stuff like that. If I go to, if I'm chilling and they're going to Pacific Coast and then you go to Bluefields. And if you take a three, about two hours, almost three hour bus ride from Chinandega back to Managua, which is the capital and I'm with the airport there. And then from Managua, if I take a taxi to the next bus terminal, now I mean, it's like a 30, 40 minute ride. Then when I reach the bus terminal to go to Atlantic Coast or the, the Caribbean Coast, I like a, a seven hour bus ride. It's in me, so I spend like 10 hours to travel to the Caribbean Coast and stuff like that. So it's very hard to link with everybody. But people live all over the place, man. So you link out them online, link out some in person and stuff like that. If you can't work with somebody in person, you can use BandLab with a free app. You record your music on the phone in BandLab. It's free. All you need is a wired headphones with a microphone and you can record. They have top notch quality in that app. You see me? So don't sleep on band lab in now. What I do for most of my artists, if I can't work with them in person, they record for me on band lab. I'll put the rhythm in band lab and I add them to the project in band lab online. So all of us have access to the same rhythm project. They record their vocals in, um, in band lab. Then when they finish, they let me know or I check on it. Boom. And now go on a band lab, edit the vocals, bounce the vocals out of the band lab, and I mix in Logic Pro X. And I have all the software to clean up the vocals, and I mean, noise gate and stuff, and clean up distance. I mean, the, the, the audio sound high quality, right? So networking. Networking helps artists connect with producers, other artists, managers, and industry professionals. These connections can lead to new projects, gigs, and business ventures. Just like that. I mean, so you want more opportunities, you got to create those opportunities. Don't sit around and wait for nobody to help you or not. Go network, go talk to people, go make the connections, I mean. I don't know, it be easy. Not everybody going to be easy to work with. Some people want to be some real frig up assholes, you know what I mean? It's my thing, so I could cuss on this, you know I mean? Some people sound real pussy, you know? But if you don't network, you won't know that. So it's not what I mean. Sometimes you're a popular artist, your, favorite, your most favorite artist, you know I mean, you try to work with them, and it's not going to work out, you know what I mean? There's some, it just, it's not going to work out. But it's okay. I saw them steer. You know, how, you, you know that now. You know how to deal with them. Move on to the next person. And then that's how you find the right people. So you're going to take some L's, you're going to get some losses, but you're going to get some wins as well too. But don't get stuck on the loss, but work on something else. Sometimes you and the next person, y'all don't, y'all not on the same frequency. Y'all live a totally different life and stuff like that. And right, link up right now, it doesn't make no sense. You know what I mean? I still go sometimes soon.
No, I mean, I remember when I was back in, um, I think I graduated high school. So well, I was in 11, I think. I was going to college. So I probably just started college inside it. So I just came back from Jamaica. So I was 11, 2012. Excuse me. I sampled um, both of them anyway. And then time I saw, I was going to Amazon with my father and working, working on the sound over there, so an electrical work and thing and thing. I mean, big up the owner, Ali, done I think on mine. Big up Amy, smoke aunties. Yeah, so I used to go to the club a lot and I see them rave parties. And I see all beer, white people coming to the club and stuff and they doing this crazy wave, uh, raves. It's the EDM music and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Techno thing and stuff. I said, wow. Doing light shows and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I said, oh, okay. So I can do some mix up, some dance all with this and you know I mean, I'm going to run the road. So I said, i go for them anyway by Bob's Cartel, produced by Russian. So I said, yeah, I definitely get that sample, you know what I mean? Like that sample came. I didn't do the crowdsourcing enough. Did not do the crowdsourcing. I should have done that time there, but what I did was, since I know the business, I contact Russian. Now I mean, contact Russian first and explain the project. I already had the, the concept, I had the rhythm made and stuff like that. I mean, I want to finalize it, but so let me just talk to them and see I get the sample kit and stuff. So I know the business, usually you, when you pay a sample, you get them on 15%, 10%, or even a 5%. But for the bigger artist, big producer, the um, higher the percentage. Now I mean, it's an upcoming person, or artist and stuff like that, you just want to see something good and then you just want to sample it. Uh, 5%, 8%, now I mean. But I said, okay, link up Russian. Because since he's a producer, he owned the project, I don't think, I mean, he let Carter know. So then time Carter was locked up too, and so I was like, right, boom, link up Russian via email and stuff. I mean, even send, I think I sent a demo track as well, too. And he said, okay, okay. All right, that's different. I mean, and yeah, sounds good. I said, if you will take uh, 15%, and I thought that would be the end of it. He said, yeah, I'll take the 50%. You know, that can go on, man. Let's make it work. But he said, but you have to get a clearance from Cartel, too. You know, Vibes Cartel, you know, different and thing and stuff. And like right now, so you have to get, you have to reach out to him as well, too. And yeah, I get that approved. But since he's locked up, you have to talk to his, um, you have to talk to his publicist. Yeah, the publicist who was in, um, I think she was in the UK. Yeah, who was in the UK at the time. So I think her name was Clear. So Russian said, yeah, you have to link up Clear. And I mean, get approved from Vibes Cartel as well, too. So he gave me information, the email and thing and thing. So link up clear, let know about the project and stuff like that. She responded within, I think, a month. She took a month to respond to me. And she said, okay, send the, um, the demo because we can make cards to hear it and stuff like that and make a decision. So did that. Took the next, probably the next month for the meet me back. Or oh, was it two months or something like that? Three months. And then Carter said, basically they said, Carter said, it's okay. But the man want 95% of the tune. So I'm like, ja, ja. 95% of the tune. 95%. And I already promised Russia on 15%. All this I got out. That's more than 100% of this. So we don't own nothing of like this no more. And I'm like, ja, no, star. This not going to make sense. And then my father told me, say, yo, oh, yeah. Too much, too much things are going on right now with cartoon and saying, we lock up and stuff. Maybe just allow that, you know, man. Right, man. Check out the sample. Do the um the track and just put in your own voice or something like that. Now I mean and push your own tune for the rave and thing. But me just let go of that project there, man. Know what I mean? Because my thing is about the culture, the music, and then the network on top of it too. So basically what I see, the rise in the rave seen them them time before everybody talking about the smiley thing and say, yeah, they were doing Mali, all type of crazy stuff. I saw a lot of crazy stuff. Them time then the club scene in, in New York City and them time, you know what I mean? And that's, that's me working and helping out at Amazon and stuff. And then they had the teen raves and stuff like that. And I go there, see a lot of this stuff. So I'm like, yo, this is when EDM music was just starting to take off, I guess, from, from me and my, my perspective. I'm starting to see back in those, those times, you know what I mean? My um, late college and um, early, um, no, 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 early college and late high school days, you know what I mean? So I was like, yo, we're going to make dance or rave music. Connect the cultures, I mean, made the artists and cross over into the rave scene and stuff like that. Now I mean, EDM. This is like Major Lazer was um stepping up as well too, and I think this was before DJ Snake and all that. I mean, 
become real popular and thing and march one yeah way before them so i wanted to do something for the push the culture down your dance or bring more dance artists into the the music industry the right way and they collect more money and stuff for that but with that note that notice that i knew was from vice cartel camp at the time and so his publicist and i mean it didn't look good so i didn't want to do anything different than that because i want to do something for the culture a long story stress, so I just started scrapping. But yo, but big up Russia and say, man. I heard some people complain about Russia, but they might do business proper, bro. They didn't, they never give no bad vibes and stuff, I mean, and you know what I mean? You do business proper. I don't know what people talking about. If there's people don't know how to do business, a lot of artists in Jamaica and all over, they don't know too much about the music business. So when they see people or producers deal with them a certain way, they take it like too personal. And they get too, they get offended and stuff like that. But it's business. Don't take it personal. My business is business. And I don't want to take the um, situation with cards on them too personal. It's just thing that add up at the right time. You know what I mean? So you have to allow it. But back to what I was saying earlier, you network with certain people, it's going to be a harder time and too much of complicated, not the right time to link up. Far back again, far again, a different time, man. Years on the line and stuff. I mean, you're thinking more advanced. You know I mean, you can do certain things. You know what I mean, so that's how it goes sometimes soon. So that's networking. 10, and the last one, creating a subscription service. This is very, very, very good. Trust me. So offering exclusive content to fans to a subscription model, where you say, okay, even your Instagram, a lot of followers on Instagram, a lot of followers on TikTok, you can start doing subscriptions now. So people can subscribe to your channel on YouTube or your, your page on Instagram or TikTok. And then, you only post, you post exclusive content for those subscribers. So certain things that everybody not can see on social media, the subscribers will be able to see. So it is beyond the scenes now, you know, getting to more into your personal life or when you're on tour and they want to see all these extra things that go on and stuff like that. I mean, subscribers, they paying you as an artist, right? Or even a producer to see, to have more access to your life and to your creative process. Maybe you, they want to learn something, how to do business better as well too. So you can teach certain things on to subscribers because they're paying you for it too. So it's like they're getting a, a class, they're paying for a class, they're paying for your time. So yeah, man, put them onto some extra games, some extra tips, you know what I mean? They, they're going to put some money into your pockets so you can take that money and invest back into yourself in your career. You know what I mean? So invest into your fans as well too. They subscribe to your channel. Give them something worthwhile to look at, not me to learn. Is it me? Platforms like Patreon, and OnlyFans, <laughs> and we, OnlyFans, so not, OnlyFans not only for no, no, you know what I mean? They grow them, I do them thing and thing and thing. OnlyFans can be used for business professionals as well, too. A lot of artists provide subscribers with exclusive access to music, behind the scenes content, live streams, and more. This creates a steady, predictable income stream. And steady, predictable income stream means that if you, if you charge $5 or $10 for each subscriber, you know that Every month, based on how, how much subscribers you have, you're going to make this amount of money. It's so simple, straightforward, easy thing, right? Not too easy if you don't know how to build your fan base and engage with people and talk with them and make your connections. We'll go back to what we said before, networking, putting out your content, and it's working, man. Work, work. All right? So I hope I learned a lot from this. You're not going to leave your comments. You're going to tell me, um, give me some feedback on certain thing then. And you can let me know what you want to hear in some future episodes. I mean, I'm here to serve y'all. You know what I mean? So let me know where I'm going. I'm blessed up. That's too sorry.